Oh, I feel smarted today. <laughs> <laughs> Gerald's going to be over there doing all kinds of live shows of this demonstration now. Watch. Maybe. <laughs> Get him addicted to it. <laughs> Wait, so hey. that, this is the first time you got uh, guests on your stream, right? You didn't have the uh, stream yard before, huh? Yeah, this is the first time I'm testing out the stream yards. And honestly, I have to give it to Nathan. This is, I'm loving this. This is a lot easier. I mean, I can't do exactly everything I want to do, like the multi stream, but uh, there's going to be a way around that. I'll find a, a workaround for that. Again? Yeah. We can do it on Rumble. And oh, you we can? can do it everywhere else. Yeah. I was looking into it. I haven't set mine up yet. I was kind of wait for Monday, but I'll, I'll work with you on it and we'll get it together. I don't have Instagram though, and I, you know, I do have an Instagram, but I don't have it set up. I don't, yeah, I, I don't even use my, I have it, but I don't even really go on Instagram. Like I try to update my Facebook for the subscribers, but that's about it. Not to ask Ben, or excuse me, not Ben. Uh, <laughs> I have to ask Crypto a little bit because he knows a lot more than we both do. But yeah, we're gonna have to all sit down in a sesh one day and just uh, go over some of this stuff. <laughs> I'll just take him about a minute. You know what I mean? But yeah, we can definitely put the uh, Rumble on here for sure. See, yeah, I didn't be... know that. I was looking into that. I was really hoping that I could stream because Rumble is getting a lot of viewers for me at least. I'm a you know I only got like 47 subscribers on Rumble, and I had like six people watching me the other day. That's pretty good. Oh, I, I put all our videos on Rumble, our our lives, just like mm -hmm. you did. I just downloaded them from the Streamyard here mm -hmm. uh, on the library portion. I just downloaded it, put them on there, put the cover page on there. By the way, if you guys need the cover page or thumbnail, I should say, just let me know. Yeah. Uh, I'll find them for you because I have them all cataloged now. It took me forever to do it yesterday. I need to do the same thing, dude. I got them all in my downloads folder. Yeah. <laughs> I got to start making some. <laughs> yeah. Although I like the ones you've made for me. That's pretty cool. Yeah, Nathan does some really like no, seriously, Nathan blows me away every time that he comes out with something for his page. Cause I, I try, you know, I offered to make you guys, you know, help you guys with intro videos and stuff, because you know, that's who I am. I like to help out. And you know, I I you know just messed around, made him one, and then he comes back, he's like, Oh no, I got it. I made one and it just blowed me out of the water. I'm like, Wow, this is way better than I did. <laughs> I wanted to just mention really quick, Acabe. Uh, botany engineering with EtherTech. I'd love to sit down and discuss that with you one day. I'm kind of behind in the um, comments because, like I said, I'm a little brain dead today. But uh, the question I had up about Royal Raymond Rife, the reason why I had it up is oh, because the, the frequency. No, it's all good. The frequencies that I use came from uh, Royal Raymond Rife's notes, and I right, have his them. frequency list. Yeah, not the one that Matthew Reif is putting out. The one that I got from a file in 2008, long before Matthew Reif came on the scene. Oh, so you have like an original document right from Reif himself. Wow. Uh, I don't know about from Reif himself, but from his lab notes, apparently. And well, that's what I mean, like directly from the source. Like it's not tainted. It's not in interpreted and rewritten or whatever. Yeah, it's... it's, it's yeah straight from the source that's like right. um stan meyer's file that's uh, important because uh, that's that's you know like if you're going to try to replicate something like stan meyer's uh purposely forged the specific frequencies or whatever he was using for his device uh according to dr greer at least and stan you know, meyer's we'll genius greer left a few things out i have his file that mm -hmm. allows you to build the epg and to build his water powered car in detail is, like to the is the epg the donut yeah yeah oh, did it's see, uh, yeah. actually together tooth. with you on that <laughs> yeah well yeah <laughs> that one oh. will get you a knock on the door real quick mm, okay well yeah. i'll think about it and i'll get back to you then because <laughs> i know i'm really excited about that device and I've, I've been trying to research it and find any information about it and i haven't been able to oh but i'll send you the file yeah Gerald, by the way, yeah. I th you should really put his picture on that video that you have for the water cart thing. Oh, Stan Myers? Yeah, yeah. because, look, I, I watched it on your channel, and oh my god, dude, you need to put his picture on there because it'd be so much more popular than it is. Have you guys seen it? 
Mm. Yeah, it's a good one. I, That's uh, I don't think so. Dude, we'll play a couple minutes of it and we'll let everybody uh, see it because I mm -hmm. think Gerald found an awesome thing here. Okay. Is it one of the old TV broadcasts of Stan Meyer? It's TV broadcasts and stuff like that, but it's a lot of valuable information. Okay, so just before you do that, he's going to talk about the water spark plug, okay? I have oh, I my terabyte. I've got my terabyte hard drive. I'll pull it up in the next, I don't know, few days, hopefully, uh, about him talking about it in a... He's doing like a little lecture for maybe 25, 30 people. And he goes on for an hour and 10 minutes in detail, oh, wow. how to build it, how he came to it, how it works, the whole nine. So I'll oh. get that up for you and uh, I'll label it. And, yeah, so that you can see yeah, that. Yeah, that's that'd be cool. awesome. No, I don't think I've seen this. I've seen the old TV broadcast, but that's not like rare, rare. You know, you do a little digging, you'll find it. This, no, this I don't is, think I've seen. This is rare. Yeah. So if Gerald, oh, I'm excited now. You got me excited. Look, whatever information you have on it, post it on your channel, man, and I'll tell people to go over and watch it for you. Dude, okay. this is amazing. But in terms of click-through rate, are you, is that, I assume that's what you're talking about by putting his picture up on the thumbnail? Yes. Yeah, so click-through rate, uh, that's what I experienced too. As soon as I put Joe Rogan up on my Divine Science uh, thumbnail, because, you know, uh, you don't want to mislead the audience. that He's in the, the documentary. So I put him up on the thumbnail, and as, immediately the click-through rate jumped through the roof. So... Yeah, yeah, he, he's the most popular guy out there, yeah. apparently. Yeah, people yeah. on my uh, channel have been looking for Stan Myers. I'll I'll send them over to you, Gerald. Just yeah. make sure you post it with his face on there somewhere, because he's sure got some reporter lady on there on the cover. And yeah, we need to fix that. I'll show you a program to get you set up uh, to put a better thumbnail up. Yeah, for sure. Because I was having a hard time with that actually. Well, I've come to the right place. All right, let me play a little bit of it for you. Injector. In order to run your car in water, the only thing we need to do is replace your spark plugs. Hook it to a computer system, take a water tank, feed the water under pressure around 125 uh, pounds of pressure. The water is converted, goes through a resonant cavity, it's converted into thermal explosive energy on demand that occurs inside the engine. Furthermore, the design technology of the water fuel for a sec. pushes out the water, pushes hey, out the on. ambient air in the process. And as a result, when the water fuel you got it, what he just said was the most important scientific discovery, and everybody misses it. When he says this water spark plug has an explosive reaction. And we take that power and use it. He's not burning water. He's actually using the explosion from separating water between oxygen and hydrogen. And that oh, very right from the bubble kick, cavitation. Yeah. And the very kick from that separation, he uses that in order to, to create flame and do everything he's doing. It's, it's right. not what people think. So, that part there, you never hear about that discussed when it comes to hydrogen research. Bob and Green here calls it the uh, electronuclear collapse. I yeah. think it's a pressure chamber. I think it's a pressure chamber. I think it's somehow he's pressurizing two chambers and different pressures to get the water to disassociate. Something like that, I guess. I don't know. I'd have I don't to know. Do it's, it's not water that goes in there because water would bend your rod on your piston uh, because it's, it's too much volume inside there. It's got to be gas at that point. Yeah, let's go back to it. I just wanted to point out that one. Oh, so that's the spark plug that ignites the disassociated water. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Whatever's coming through there has to be in gas form. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's already. Well, that's the, is that the schematic of the spark plug there on the screen? Or what is that? That's an engine. That's right? part of it. He actually shows the spark plug in this video. He has it in his hand. Okay. They, they perfected it. It's why he was, well, one of the reasons why he had problems. Let's just say that. Okay, let me hit play. We'll yep. listen to it again from the beginning. The technology Sorry. has taken us now down to the size of a water fuel injector. In order to run your car in water, the only thing we need to do is replace your spark plugs. Hook it to a computer system, take a water tank, feed the water under pressure around 125 uh, pounds of pressure. The water is converted, goes through a resonant cavity, it's converted into thermal explosive energy on demand that occurs inside the engine. Furthermore, the design technology of the water fuel injector 
pushes out, the water pushes out any ambient air in the process. And as a result, when the water fills the resonant cavity, and it's now, uh, when high voltage uh, hits it, now converts it, liberates the gases oh. from the water, ionizes it. Yeah, Mike, and you're right. Spark ignition. It you has see? minimal amount of interaction with the ambient air. I think air, there's so something about that. You knock down any form of nitrous oxide, which is minimal oh, anyhow, shaped. to almost an absolutely negligible factor. So the water fuel injector now can fit into an, any internal combustion engine, as you see right here. And I think I saw this water flow in reference to the applied pulse voltage frequency electronically. Go ahead. You remember I mentioned that the same engineering design specification of one system would apply to all systems. Yeah, so there's no spark. Size. Did I not say that? It's the pressure Here's that an ignites example the water. Of the water fuel injectors, as you see it, that replaces your spark plug. Go ahead. So I, I'm guessing there's no spark going on here, and that the two pressures that he created in that chamber yeah, create ever enough at a, pressure to ignite it, just like you would do a diesel. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. A diesel motor, same thing. Right. Yeah, you just pressurize the diesel; it ignites. You don't need a spark plug. You don't need a spark. You don't need a flame to ignite these. I mean, yeah, maybe pressure. he's just calling it a spark plug for conventional needs. Yeah, if you put too much well, air in it, it replaces your motor. spark plug. So, it, you know, he says yeah. it replaces your spark plug. So that means it replaces the spark and the plug. In, at some degree, that's what he said, you know? Yeah, yeah it does. Uh, it, it replaces it entirely. Need the need for a spark is what I uh, what I was hearing him kind of say it that way. You know the way he. It's part of it though. There's a plasma reaction that's created that creates the spark. I'm not exactly sure how he does it. It's still it, spark diffused plans. water and ignited though. No, no doubt. Well, I know the two components that we deciphered on stream recently was he was a pre ionizing his air for uh, preconditioning it for bubble cavitation. And he was also resonating the tubes for he used for electrolysis with the load with the um, he's resonating the conductor with the load at a specific frequency. So those two elements, um, in my opinion, are critical in making the system work, but it, it might not be the whole picture. Yeah, he put a, a couple of things in there that didn't need to be in there let's just say that yeah he misled people didn't he with this patent i think he had to the guy was a genius he knew that uh whoever seen that tech was going to want it by any means necessary the yeah. united states military was trying to uh buy it off him for 300 million dollars and he told him to go pound sand because yeah, they like this take man. It's it, not let the public get it which i get but that's apparently Shortly after that, where he had problems, <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say about that. <laughs> I mean, look, put yourself in his yeah, shoes. Yeah, when he tried to he's monetize it, right? He he's thinking hydrogen. You know, okay, what can we do to ignite hydrogen? What have we done to ignite hydrogen? We pressurized it. We've done all kinds of things. So he he went the pressurizing route. And he, no. you know, yeah. obviously he's dealing with water. Who's... Water's two hydrogens. So there you have. I'm it. wondering whose work he's he's based off of. Like who who did he research um, when he was? It was uh, his brother's uh, work, actually. Yeah, who's you cut out? It was his brother was the engineer that actually figured it out, and they worked together. Oh. On it. Well, he's he, was he, he a student of Tesla or? Uh, I don't know, else? but he didn't pressurize the hydrogen because it's illegal it becomes explosive if you were to ever get into a car accident forget it you're done so is well, the other car he pressurizes it and he ignites it with a spark you know but well like i said before most people miss this it's the the energy from breaking the actual molecule of water between hydrogen and oxygen because there's a huge bang when you break those two there's a excess of energy i know nobody wants to believe that but if you've ever played with hydrogen or lit water on fire you'd understand what i'm talking about i've lit water on fire so many times <laughs> i got in trouble from from my wife <laughs> <laughs> i got in trouble from my wife <laughs> i i know that <laughs> I, used to, I used to sit there and let it bubble and then she'd walk in the house and you i'd light it see this, uh, the windows you see this fuel cell g <laughs> <laughs> used to light f bottle rockets off the roof but i got in trouble by my wife <laughs> i fired in a mess <laughs> check I'm out this fuel around, cell ben man. it's a uh, low f uh, ulf ultra low frequency uh below schumann check it out
Hey guys, look, I just want to say hi to Crypto uh, out there. What's up, Crypto? Hey, what's up, Crypto? crypto. Bernie. Come on in and join the fun if you want. Very nice. This guy here, Ben, in this video, he did ULF, ultra low frequency. I, I it's like one uh one thousandth of a hurt pulse. Did you you put it in the the private chat? The link? It's uh, no, I, I'm, the I'm sharing the, the video. Thing. Presenting it. Ben? We can't um, see it. Crypto has an yeah. admin to the uh, stream yard, so we can get in at any time. Wait, say that again, Nathan? He's an admin a admin on stream yard, like Gerald and you are. Oh, so well, yeah, we we're all admin. And click. Yeah, so he's got it. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just, uh, I'm new to this, so I'm trying to figure out um hey brandon uh, wants to get on stream brandon mcnamara hmm. i'll let you guys figure that out I'm just let me just put the link here. yeah just There's put the link and uh, i'll present in place it in a, uh, a volkswagen uh, engine you'll see a doom buggy yeah, let's watch a little bit of this and then i'll i'll put it up in Go a ahead. little bit in a few minutes this is the world's fastest Corvette. It broke the uh, 271 mile an hour speed record. We're taking the water fuels uh, injector technology, hooking it up to it. And uh, that's a seven horsepower engine. We're now increasing it to uh, 1000 horsepower because we can control the energy the going into the engine. And as a result, we're gonna try to break the world's uh, land record with that car. Go ahead. This shows where we're hooking up to an Alaskan um, Bushmaster in order to break the aviation history and run it on water. Go ahead. This is where the injectors are now put into a tubular cylindrical arrangement in order to supply heat to the existing furnace or to a uh, steel mill. Go ahead. This is an example of the injectors now being retrofitted to an internal uh, a jet engine. Go ahead. This shows the jet commander. We're now retrofitting the technology too. Uh, we're going to try to break the record to go around the equator nonstop and turn it 90 degrees and go from north to south pole with it. So we're going to show demonstrations that we have, in fact, available viable answer to the energy problem using water as fuel. Go ahead. This shows a closer example of the jet engine where all we do is replace the injectors in the jet engine and hook, link it up to the computer systems, which now will control the, uh, the production of the gas. Yes, we'll be going on for the stream day. for all day. Uh, I plan on it streaming all through the night, hopefully, uh, the rocket if I can survive it. Go ahead. Go ahead with the uh, videotape. It's a marathon. <laughs> yeah, sometimes you, you can only stream for a couple hours because it takes a lot out of you, but I'll go as long as I can, man. I hear you. Thank you. After the uh, videotape, we'll ha I'll open up for uh, questions and answers. I'll soon it. How about all right, the average cost it looks like to retrofit to an existing car will be roughly around $1,500. It looks like around $3,500. I made an announcement today in Colorado Springs. He says he's come up with a device that will hook up to any engine and allow it to run on good old H2O. This 13's Kurt Goff tonight on the possible impact of the water fuel cell. Stanley Myers says the answer to dependence on foreign oil lies all around us in seawater, tap water, and rainwater. Any kind of H2O, he says, can power just about every type of engine. How? With the water fuel cell. It fits in the palm of his hand, but it could revolutionize the world. You're talking about a pollution-free, totally new source of energy, the voltage disassociation of water. The fuel cell converts water into a gas, hydrogen oxygen, which is released in the form of thermo-explosive energy. So the water fuel injector simply replaces the spark plug. We hook it to a hydrogen computer system, which regulates and meters the flow going into the injector. It processes the water in such a way to release this thermal explosive energy. And the tubular array exciters or voltage zones are immersed in natural water, forming the water fuel cell. Once energized, the gases are quickly generated on demand, releasing energy in the form of hydrogen gas that is two and a half times more powerful than gasoline. Once the fuel cell meets the energy demand, switch off the voltage zone, terminating the gas. You are now witnessing, in the truest scientific terminology,
the ability of burning ordinary water under control means. The temperature produced exceeds 2,500 degrees Fahrenheit. The quenching circuit prevents anti-spark back while hydrogen gas is rendered safer than natural gas. Increased voltage on demand increases flame size, increases BTU capacity. The heat energy shown is two and a half times greater than that of gasoline and burns three times faster. Because of this, the gas energy can now be used to run your car on water. Uh, can you pause it real quick for a second, Nathan? Okay. Oh, Got it. So, so Brandon, um, it says, okay, but here's the thing. How does this solve the energy crisis? How is this over unity? Are you just extending the tailpipe? So, uh, what, uh, these, uh, kinds of electrolysis systems do are, um, not specifically over unity, but they're just highly efficient systems. And I know that, uh, specifically the thunderstorm generator is, uh, a lot of people get that wrong. They think it's an over unity system too. It's not, it's actually just really, really efficient. And the way yeah, it right. solves the energy crisis or helps it at least is it gets rid of uh, emissions, you know, in places like India, you have highly concentrated, uh, you know, smog um, choking people out. So that's that's going to be a big uh, help in those third world countries. But that's pretty and much with, it. With Stanley Meyer's system, like I said prior, he uses the energy from the actual splitting of the uh, H2O. But when it reforms, it turns into water and comes up the tailpipe. So there's no downfall. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I know right. there's a battery right. in the car and stuff, but your your alternator's charging that as you're using it for your electrolysis. Because he used like high voltage, no amps whatsoever, from my understanding. Mm -hmm. And it's basically a step in the right direction. You know, it's not going to yeah. solve everything. You can't, no, you know, no. solve all the problems with this, but it's a step in the right direction. And I think uh, if we had cars running on this, we'd see a lot less smog and we'd be able to see the California sign once again, you know? Well, see, that's the thing. We wouldn't be putting smog in. So at least that would allow the planet or the natural mechanism for, for all this, what do they call it? I don't know. <laughs> Well, smog and, and 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 all that. Yeah, go ahead. If, you, if you're in a rocket somewhere, it ser it serves as your energy source and also your drinking water. No, that's true too. Yeah. Yeah. So now and now now we get our little uh what was it uh Kmart or something or Walmart in our little ship. This is the first step. We're not <laughs> drinking our pee. Right. We still may be eating it our marijuana though. I can't believe with all the technology we have, NASA's making those a poor astronauts drink their own pee. Come on, man. <laughs> Haven't we learned anything by watching our videos? <laughs> yeah. Well, who knows? All right, guys, you ready? <laughs> yeah. We'll go. I'll play, we'll play like uh, two more, two or three more minutes of this, and I'll move on to the next video. Yeah, this is all new to me. I haven't seen this. You know what breaks the law of thermodynamics? How a magnet pulls to a piece of iron. Yeah, I was just talking about that on one of my streams, Mike, uh, that the magnets are nature's over-unity devices. Sorry. Go ahead, guys. I was just muting the... Oh, no, you're good. Uh, he, Mike was saying that, you know, like... Uh, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't people wanna... are questioning of what... Is there such a thing as free energy? Take a magnet, yeah. put it close to a piece of iron, and see what it does. Yeah. And uh it moves the, on its own. The, That's what it the does. And the explanation I like to describe to people as well is uh make sure your iron you know, is you, stationary and the magnet is not. Right. But if you calculate like so you know how to create a magnet, right? You pulse it with a little bit of electricity. So if if you calculate the amount of energy it requires to pulse a magnet and create a magnet, 
compared to the amount of years it can sustain itself against its own weight and gravity, you clearly get more energy out than you put in to create it. And this is this is verifiable with math as well, but you can, you know, just what other device or mechanism in, that you know does that can sustain itself against its own weight and gravity for years at a time. Uh, that requires an enormous amount of energy. Where's that energy coming from? The vacuum. One of the, one of the problems that, that we device? all have searching for this is how mainstream media and uh, uh, a lot of others in the scientific community, not the ones, <clears throat> sorry, that we know, for the most part but they've bastardized the word free energy so when you hear it all of a sudden people's alarm bells go off and it's like yeah. oh here we go snake oil no, that's not free nature yeah free. it's like, a, you know like I mean? the so, in their condescending tone you know that's free who energy for us. nature's just working for Screw us. you not free. <laughs> yeah. yeah exactly and, and it's not free if, if the energy is actually for us. in if the if this energy is abundant in nature all around us at any time, it's not free. We're actually technically wasting it, not tapping into it. Right. It's already uh, there. Like the wind, the water movement, all that. Stuff. Well, I don't know about wasting like, it, but we're definitely not tapping. Well, not, it's that's a bad choice of words, but you get the, the idea, waves. right? No, I it's do. It's already there. Yeah, right. It's it's we're not creating it out of nothing. It's already there. It's waiting to be used. Victor Schauberger, uh, he was all about nature and the flow of water and the flow of energy. It's, uh, I think it, that's where it's all at, the flow of energy and capturing that flow as it's right. flowing. It's, if you think about a water wheel, you know, if you have a stream uh, and you attach a water wheel to it, that's free work, you know, indefinitely as long as that stream flows. Uh, you know, that's that's free energy for you. You know what I mean? <laughs> very true. Very true. I, I don't. Uh, idea. I don't pay for charging batteries anymore. <laughs> right, but yeah, this well, uh, gravity. You don't have to pay for gravity. the word free energy is is got to go. You don't have to work for gravity. No, gravity works against you. Well, if you're trying to fly, anyway. <laughs> hey, didn't you have a theory that we all could fly? Yep, absolutely. I believe that, that it's genetically. Um, what I'm saying is, gravity did not, you know, That's charge you a feet to, to make exist a for that. you. It's there. It, gravity did not work. We do not have to provide gravity. Gravity provided itself, is what I'm saying. Hmm. So in that it's sense, you do not have to work for gravity to be around. It it made itself present. And well, of course, we have to work. At some level, to deal with gravity, right? We got to figure out a way of negating it. But it's there. It's there. It's not something we created. It's free. Or See, it's but here's the other part of that. What if it's not gravity? What if gravity is just a byproduct of a series of systems that come together in order for us to have life on this planet? Gravity is just a, like a dirty word, like like I mean, yeah. I'm something. almost it's just a different kind of it. gravity. Is a different kind of magnetism, right? I'm Perhaps, yeah. I'm, I'm convinced that the first electric generator was, you know, just cavemen just stepping on a rope and going down the the, the cliff on the rope, you know, and pulling a, a weight up and then letting the weight fall back down and spin uh, something to push or water or whatever, something like that. Hmm. That's when it all started for us to use gravity is when we had ropes and Oh, is and, this the and, video and that cliffs and, and you know so things we climb up? We climb up the cliff. We use a rope. We were pulling up our gear with a rope. You know, mm -hmm. this is and then uh, we learned from there how to tr use the weight to pull other things up for us. Once we got up there, so we didn't have to, you know, get it. <laughs> yeah, this is Schauberger. like an elevator. Yes, this video is Schauberger. I want you to notice when he has this coil here where the water. All right, well, where's the water going, right? Gerald and I were talking about the coil earlier, right, Ben? We're all in this? Right. Watch the water in this. I'm going to hit play. Uh -huh. The coils are at the top? Do you see how it's moving around it? Oh, that's oh, crazy yeah. gorgeous. What, what yep. is this? Do you, yep, you see how it's exactly around it? 
Yeah. Uh, it froze for me for a second. Hold on. I'm going to play it one more time for you, okay? Just give me a second. I was trying to draw that yesterday, but I sucked at it. Is that a liquid that's going down the center? That's water. water. And it's energy in the water. He's got that's coils cool. that are highly charged or something. So what his son says in the documentary, okay, is that it didn't have current to it. So they couldn't use it as an energy source. <laughs> what he didn't realize is the guy was putting pure potential into this in making the correct fields for the coil. That makes sense. And considering oh. he had al uh, alternating spirals there, and my coil has the alternating spirals woven within the whole coil itself. That's crazy. Yeah, that went even further, okay, in the picture that he gave, Gerald. Hold on. Give me a second, guys, and I'll pull that up, okay? But if you ever watch a documentary in this, uh, uh, let me just read the time off for real quick for you. 38 minutes and 35 seconds into the video is where it's at. Okay. okay. And then you guys can watch that on your own if you want, but that's probably the best part of this whole thing almost. Now I'll pull the picture. Give me a minute. You guys go ahead and talk. Nice. Yabba dabba do. Yeah, that was a yeah, really awesome. Bunga, bunga. Bunga, bunga. <laughs> Isn't it Cowabunga? No, Cowabunga. Bunga, bunga. You know, I was just trying to find the Ninja Turtles Captain arcade Caveman. game from the 90s <laughs> earlier today to play it. <laughs> so yeah, here we I, go. I, this right that. here. Now, look. These are just little plus signs on the outside by the outside of his coil. You see them? Mm. I don't know if you see no. my cursor on the screen, but... Yeah, we yeah. do. So it's got oh, all yeah. the energy in there going right there, and it's swirling, just like Gerald's saying, okay? We're wow. swirling in. Notice he shows it goes out, and then it goes in, and then it also has the field here, Gerald, talking about the two fields working that are opposite each other, and you have the vortex in the center. So, so is it pushing one charge inward and then at the same time pushing another charge outward? More like spinning, happening? more like spinning in one direction in the inner core and spinning mm -hmm. in the opposite direction on the outer core, which creates right. That. And one of those spirals is an implosion, and the other spiral is an explosion. Yeah, or whatever. and it's conventionally yeah. explained that yeah, way. You too. Can look at it that way. Yeah, yeah. It's just another way of describing. It, that's all. I just yeah. You know, I, I think mean, about things in in terms of positive how the I've negative goes inside the core. Visualize negative them. The positive goes outside the core. Yeah, Mike's right. When when the vortex is getting pulled in from the top and it's getting pulled in from the bottom and it's creating that outer uh, shell, there's like two points of energy. You'd have yeah, to it's a root. It's a like close the molecular root. level. I mean, but the, the positive and the negative are chasing each other in the null zone in the center of the coil. You don't oh, see they're it. chasing each other, but they're separated. It's you're a saying it's a 360 yep. degree yep. circle. The field is a 360 degree circle. The two ends of the tails meet. That's why you see that snake eating its tail. Hmm. Yeah, but that's it's, it's I understand what connects. you're saying, Mike. But it's different. You're talking about a snake eating its Each tail. Cycle oh. every cycle in every frequency is one 360 degree. No, 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 no it's not. That's the difference. It's not a. Thinking of tail, that would be in just a normal circle around the donut. That is one cycle. Yeah. That represents no, one no, cycle. No. Oh, okay, one cycle, yes. So it's a spiral that goes around it so that it's never ending. When it goes around it, it can't get to the tail. It chases the tail, but it can never What's reach. What's never ending is the number mm. of cycles, not it's the, the open cycle circuit. itself. Well, no. okay. well, the cycle itself doesn't, I don't know, it continues. Yeah, but yeah, you still have a 360-degree uh, turn. Yeah, even I'm just it, saying. Even it, though it, it continues, right. it doesn't. Even though it, it continues, it it just doesn't eat itself. It just can't. Yeah, yeah. Rent. Yeah, but each no, cycle is 360 it. degrees of the continuous spiral that you're referring to. 
it's like wrapping a wire around a donut. It just right. keeps wrapping, and you're never going to connect you the got wire. Thousands to the of three hundred and sixty degree cycles lying there. Mike, I think you're donut. misunderstanding. The cycle would be from input to output, but because no, the that's the wound no, the that's not that the cycle the I'm talking. I'm talking about one hurt is one cycle. Now you got how many rings around that thing? That's how many cycles you have. But it's and each cycle is three hundred and sixty degrees. But what ring are you talking about when you're talking about my three hundred and sixty degrees? About this picture, three hundred and sixty degrees is a circle. <laughs> yeah, my, you don't want a circle. It's a, yeah, it's not exactly yeah, a circle. You have cycles. Know what you're saying? The spiral. The spiral does not have one cycle. It has Mike, do you know how to cycles. square the circle? Do you know how to square the circle? I'm not going to do math with you now. I'm just telling no, you. No, it's not here. math. I'm talking about something completely different. And that's where the disconnect comes from. You're talking about a circle, but there's not a circle in the system. A cycle, a, square, a cycle, a triangle. A I'm not talking about a circle. I'm talking about a cycle. S Y C L E. Yes, and I understand what you're saying. And that is a 360 degree circle. Is translated as that. And in your understanding, you're absolutely right. But that's not what we're talking about here. So you're you talking a about a cycle around. being a circle. Of course it is. But it does the energy that we're talking about doesn't flow in a circle the way that you're thinking. Mm. I don't know what, what I'm thinking. Tell me what I'm thinking. I, I haven't. Well, I don't know. I'm There's just stating way. facts here. I'm not stating thoughts. Okay. I'm telling you, a cycle is one 360 degree turn. What else do you want me to say? I. Can agree to disagree. That's all I can do. Mike. You can disagree with that if you want to. I have no no problem with that. Yeah, and I don't have it's, any problem with that either. It's that's okay. that's it's why okay. I like having sometimes, you around, Mike. Yeah, sometimes we reach an impasse, and it's okay. You know, so it, it's it's how we learn. So no, 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 the EMF awesome. field is a circle. It's not one cycle per se, but it is a three hundred and sixty degree turn in the EMF field. That's why it goes in the center and out the outer. Like a circle, two circles. I see what you're saying. Well, not really two circles, but multiple circles, omnidirectionally forming circles of who knows how many circles. But we cannot teach like that. But that's the way it is. So why can't we teach that way? Oh, God. Because then they're going to ask you exactly how many circles are there? 24. No, there's, un you can't even count them. There's no way to count them, dude. Unless are you, you, know are you talking about a mic coil? No, I'm just saying on any field that's being generated, even on a regular magnet, let's just stick with a regular magnet and the field that's on that. You know, it's a cycle. It's not, it's, it's, it's not one cycle. It's cycles, but it's not one circle, but we show it as two rings or one ring, you know, in the center, out the outer, you know, positive and negative in the center. And that's and what Nathan was trying outer. to... That's what Nathan was trying to explain, but the circles but are that, different. That description is describing one cycle for just you to see how it flows. It's not describing yeah, what actually the, is there. The point is, is more than one cycle. It's infinite cycles. Mm -hmm. It doesn't stop until mm -hmm. the power turns off. Exactly. That's my point, Nathan, that it's infinite cycles. But there you go. we are describing one when we talk about the field of a magnet. Okay. I'm good with that. Mike, you rock, man. You're totally my opposite. We come I can't the discuss the uh, different angles describing a field of a magnet. I'm sorry. Dude, I'm, we're trying I'm to sorry, get dude. the same okay. thing. I would love we're to, getting... but I'm not an alien from who knows where with, with a brain the dude. size of a, of a car. You know? Sometimes it takes a little bit of tweaking to get us all on the same page. But we're, getting to the the same point. Head. we're getting to the same point from different angles, Mike. That's why I like you. <laughs> I just, it's crazy how he, he's doing this Call and he Peter. showed you this. And now we're looking at Gerald's coil kind of in the same way that it's yeah. having the same exact thing Schauberger was doing. And when we describe how it's working through the air, it's the same way Schauberger describes it. Hmm. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah, that's yeah. a good connection there. It, 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 it's beyond good because this also translates into water and why... You know what I mean? You're using water, car, and stuff like that, and the mm -hmm. energy you're producing out there, we're only looking for potential. We're never right. looking for AC and DC because those are man-made. 
We right. are looking for what the earth makes, which is potential. Yeah. Right. That no, that's a wonderful way of putting it. And every time you say something, Nathan, you just explain it in a way that I just understand. I don't know. Some <laughs> some some things that you say just resonate with me. I mean, all of you to a certain extent, but I don't know. It just I love having you guys on here. That's why. That's why that's I like why that's why I like this live stream. <laughs> it's important to have as different people as possible on your stream. That way you're not in an echo chamber. You know what right, I mean? exactly. Yeah. I love that. Yeah, exactly. And I, I welcome all people, even if you hate me, come on here and talk to me. I don't care. <laughs> Except for theoretical physicists. You're not welcome. No, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Only Gerald, man. Yeah, you know. I'm not kind of I blame we don't it on welcome the, your kind here, say. <laughs> I, I, I blame it on the uh, painkillers. I apologize. <laughs> You're going to need one of those theoretical physicists when we start doing the math because you're going to have to direct him exactly where to do the math. And you know what? Uh, I have in mind one physicist who I see as a genius, but he doesn't look as at himself as, and then an experimentalist that's open-minded enough to debunk me if, if, uh, that's the case, right? So yeah. once you guys do the experiments, uh, if if you haven't debunked me, we're gonna pass it on to him and tell him, you know, here's what's been done and give it a shot and I'll contact the theoretical physicist. Sorry, yeah. lightheaded at the same time. <laughs> and hey, Gerald, I'm not that. debunking you, brother. I'm gonna build this into a craft is what we're gonna do. No, I get that, but I like the fact that if you come at it from the angle of trying to debunk me and you can't, then I'm right. Yeah. See, if and if you do, well, then I'm wrong and I'm to... missing something. What's that? If they, did a, if they try to describe the field as cycles of force instead of lines of force, you, you just would not see it. And you, know, you wouldn't see it. You wouldn't well, I see what to... you're trying to explain, Mike. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's just and then later they, you know, after you see in the lines of force, how they connect into a circle, then they leave it for you to figure that out. OK, that hold way. on. hold on. Let's go back to this and let's look at it again. OK. It's infinite because it continues to go and these never reach the same. Technically, point. it's not a line of force, though. Look, they never reach the same point where they're, they're combining. Do you see all the different ones? And this is what we're talking about right here. That's just beautiful. It's never a pure circle. Every, every time we look at it, as you can see it right here, it's Ugh. like individual energy streams going around in a circle. But then because it's potential, it it's like it's putting out a fog of energy in the room. Yeah, you could say that, definitely. That's insane. Yeah, we, we yeah, think of the fog as just like video. static electricity, but as, as Gerald and I both have done, our rooms are filled with it when you start oh. running with this stuff. Kate, I had yeah, something. That's a really cool fog. There. I had something that I got to tell you about. I had a wild it's static, dream static last fog. Night. Yeah, yeah. They call that static fog. Go ahead, so Gerald. I, I had a wild dream last night about grounding. Now, when it comes to your system, no system can outdo the mass of its own ground. So if you were to ground your, say, say your back EMF or negative energy, call it whatever you want, if you were to ground that to the outside of your ship, that changes how your field operates. So you can control the outside uh, uh, bubble as well as the inside bubble by interacting with the two through the bifiler coil. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Right, because the bifilers are obviously uh, well, the one is uh, their one bifilers is are different, but you know what? It's really not, I shouldn't say bifiler because it's really. I say bifiler because there's two coils woven into one, 
but they're 180 degrees out of phase. Most people, mm -hmm. when they hear mm -hmm. by they think of a solenoid and they twist the wires together and they wrap a solenoid. That's not what I'm talking about at all. Right. Yeah, yeah. And most people d didn't make a by -fighter. I don't think it's very common to make those. No, I think you're right on that. They're usually for that's pulse cool things, sir. So that's, all, there it is. This yeah. right here is the gravity flyer's energy field. It's turned on the mm -hmm. side from what you have. I was about yeah, I was visualizing it the other way. Yeah, my open core. Oh, look at that circle. Wow. Is that a circle? Multiple. Yeah. It's looks like multiple circles. It's not the same thing. <laughs> it's omnidirectional circular uh This is like a compressed uh capacitor yep. where the energy busts out the sides, but it, it creates a toroid on the top and the bottom, or the circle if you want to, and it works like two bubbles inside of a big bubble. That's why if you envision a balloon and you put it against your desk and push down on it. Then let your finger off and the balloon jumps. Because, yeah. mm. because the mass of the gravity flyer is so much that it doesn't understand that there isn't the table there anymore. You can continue to push the top of the balloon down and do it again. That is exactly what the piezo disc does in this system. It's continuously pushing mm. on the balloon. Yeah. You know what? I like this picture. It provides I a love this picture too. The, the only difference is, is my coil will be turned 90 degrees so that the open core, that tunnel would go through the open core and there would be mm. an identical bubble that would be spinning on the outside of it in the opposite direction. And there would be an open hole on that outside bubble, but it would only align twice every revolution, right? So once every when, revolution. When they describe two forms of gravity, your coil versus what I'm doing are the two different types, okay? You can use yeah. them both, but if you use them together, you get a magnetosphere. Yeah. Yeah. That's what we were talking about earlier, like force field. Yep. Horizontal, mm -hmm. vertical, right? Depends on so the coil sitting. Longitudinal and what's the other one? I don't know. Oh, horizontal, uh, vertical. I just call them. I just call them horizontal waves and vertical waves. Yeah, it's transverse and longitudinal. Yeah, uh, yeah I gotta yeah. check something, you guys. I'll be right back, really quick. Yeah, right? you got it. Right on. Yeah, no problem. Anyway, I just thought I'd that to you guys. Just, oh, oh yeah, that's neat. I appreciate it, Nathan. Yeah, it's a little bit different. All right, Ben, what do you got on tap? I'm going to go ahead and take this off screen share. Uh, so I got something that Mike wanted to uh, uh, share with us real quick, and then we'll get back into my pre-planned um, videos where we're going to take a look at some of the hack jobs at some of the free energy devices that I found. And if anybody has any more, they can post in the chat as well. Hey, Nathan, what's the shape of the 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 PZO, what you call it, the, the transducer? Say, say that one more time. What What's the shape of the transducer you're using on the Gravifier, the PZO disc? Oh, it's just a little round one like you get in your drum set. Oh, it's a circle. Yeah, it's just a circle. It's round. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. Why is it not in square? I, exam I guess you could use a square one. It really, I don't think it really matters as long as it produces the same wave. You think it would? Okay. Hmm. So this is a video that Mike sent us. Um, it's water electrolysis uh, through pulsed modulation. Show you what all we've got set up here. You're looking at the... I don't uh, know. This guy's doing it at uh, one HHO tank right here. Which is one thousandth of a hertz. I've got a number of stainless steel plates, which are He's connected. He's oscillating this thing at via, one thousandth uh, of a hertz. Uh, some stainless steel rods, but they're non-contacting and they're connected in parallel. So that's a very, very low frequency. Yeah, a ULF, uh, so, like extremely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One play to be positive, the next one to be negative, the next one positive, so on and so forth. And There's it's working around really. here. You just watch this. <clears throat> you see the back of the tank. 
where I'm coming in. Uh, one lead of the tank is the going directly into the negative the side of the power supply. Uh, the other lead is going into the source of a transistor. And then the positive side is going into the drain of the transistor, which is here on the center. I've got a um, signal generator hooked up to the uh, source in the gate, which is going to be switching the transistor at a specific frequency. And if you can see down here, I've got the transistor just in a vice, which is my makeshift heat sink. The pan over here, <coughs> you can see the digital power supply set up. Voltage reading is on the right, amperage on the left. Over here, I have an Agilent 3322A uh, signal generator. This generator will go from 0 to 20 megahertz with a resolution down to 1 microhertz. So we can go six decimal places in resolution in fractional hertz, which is going to be very important because the way that this resonant frequency sets up, it's sensitive down to about a 10 thousandth of a hertz. So hmm. that's what our setup what is, is that? there. So we're going to come over here, ten thousands of a and I'm going to mount this thing on the tripod. Yeah, to be honest, I wouldn't even and know where to, to begin how to produce that low you. frequency. That's like a microhertz, like you know, very very low frequency. I don't even know how he gets mm -hmm. the amps in there like that. Yeah. This is a or maybe he's on time. Situation. I don't know and what his duty cycle can... is. Yeah, what, Mike? I couldn't figure out what he said his duty cycle was on that mm. frequency. Is hmm. he like on most of the hurt and off just that one ten thousandths of a hurt? Or is he on one right. ten thousandths of a hurt and off the rest of the hurt? Yeah, now, what's the he's, timing? He's got he's got a, a vice grip for a heat sink. That tells me he might be on more than he's off. Hmm. I don't know. But he's not drawing well, any current, so how is that possible? You watch. Does, he doesn't ever explain it in the video, or no? He does. Just watch. He, he does. Oh, okay. Take the frequency, which we're switching the transistor at, and actually reflect the energy coming all the way back to the source, and I'll show you how we're actually able to zero out the amperage coming from the power supply. I'm going to turn on a light here so that you can see the tank whenever it starts boiling and making uh, hydrogen. And at the same time, you can see the amp meter off in the distance of the power supply. First quick experiment I'll show you. We'll just disconnect the power supply to the transistor and we'll run the power from the power supply directly to the tank itself without switching anything. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to disconnect this here. I'm going to connect this here. I'm going to turn the power supply up to about 7 volts, which will be the reading on the uh, right-hand side of the power supply. And you can see what kind of current going directly into the tank at 7 volts this thing produces. So we'll Seven break volts. it up. And oh I forgot. Just a minute. I gotta I gotta come over here. I gotta I gotta connect. Connect this. I didn't have this even connected in. So let me connect this as well. That always happens on live. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right, as much as you prepare, there's Seven always volts. gonna be something you forget. <laughs> Well, you could see him zero out the amps if you wait a little, watch it, you know. Okay, coming off the power supply, it's seven wow, volts. Wow, that's crazy. We're pulling about 12.5 amps. Let me give a little bit of a zoom here. It's a lot of amps. Yeah. Right, he's going he's to change that, watch. Let me, so now you can see, and obviously you can see that... The tank is just he's not he's not pulsing i don't think it's direct current hydrogen straight, off of you know? the plates mm. okay no transistor right now just 
straight to the power supply. Yeah, a little bit more. So we're looking at right at. Isn't it mean just from cloud chamber? Eleven point nine amps. Okay. Now we're gonna disconnect. Right here. He's gonna blow the circuit. <laughs> No, now he's going to hook up the transistor and, and send right. a frequency. So we'll turn this With off. The function generator. <clears throat> oh, it's the, smoking a little bit. Let the bubbles settle in the tank. Now, the next thing we're going to do. Yeah, he turned it off just now. Mm. He's going to connect the transistor here. now and turn on the function generator. Gonna and now he's going to pulse it with DC instead of tank. giving it direct DC. I'll come over here and. Connect the power supply to the drain of the transistor. And what we're going to do to start with is we're going to essentially, I'm, I'm going to uh, bring the signal generator pretty close, try to get fairly close to where I know the frequency range is here. <clears throat> and I'm going to engage the signal generator and turn it on. And then we're going to go back and we're going to start cranking the power up again. So I'm going to run it at seven volts, which is where it was before when it peaked out at about 12 amps. And what you're going to see to begin with here is, is you're going to see the amperage rise and fall when we start cranking this thing up. You can see the volts on the right and the amps on the left. And let's see here. Okay. Interestingly enough, sometimes I get lucky and hit it right on the frequency when I tune it in. So now you can see 7.1 volts. You can see the tank. Now, now you're starting to see it trigger up. Okay. The answer so essentially, you're watching the amperage rise. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to keep an eye on that, and I'm going to switch the signal generator. And when I do, I'm going to play around with the frequency a little bit to come in to try to tune this thing. Right now, it's peaking out, which means it's, it, okay, now it's dropping back down. And it takes a minute to lock this thing in. It'll it'll go up and down, up and down, up and down. You're seeing the seven volts on that side. Okay, it's starting to rise again. Once I get close to the frequency that it needs to be at, I can kind of lock it in to where it won't rise and fall. Now I'm, I'm peaking it out at nine, 9.5. And actually, let's see if I can drop it down. There we go. Now it's dropping back down. The answer on the left. What I want it to do is just drop slowly. Okay. I'm tuning it over here with my signal generator. And I'm literally adjusting the frequency at a thousandth of a hertz. All the while, we're generating gas. Now we're locking in the uh, power supply current. And as best as what I can tell, we're matching the frequency of the pulse so that whenever the plates discharge through the water, we're getting the reflective energy back and it's meeting the positive energy going forward. Now, once I get this thing really tuned, that thing will stay locked on zero amps indefinitely. And it's like matching the output pulse. Now, it's starting to climb again. So what I'll do is, is I'll go over here and I'll start finding where my frequency needs to be. And if I get real close, see, I can. You guys, I'll be right back in about four minutes. I'll still be listening, but I'm going to go off camera for a few minutes. Give me one second. I will continue to play this. And stop it. Let's see if we can tune it. Now it's not rising. Now we're going to drop it back down. <clears throat> it's like tuning a radio. And the more I work with it, the further I go. Right now I'm 
I'm adjusting the uh, frequency at, at one one thousandth of a hertz. Here it comes dropping on down. 3.2.1 0 You can see at the bottom of the video the tank it's just pouring off the hydrogen from the plates. And look at the power supply, and we're keeping it steady so that the reflective energy is, is equal to the outgoing energy going into the system. And the power supply is being zeroed out to where there's no current that's being, being able to be measured into the circuit. There is electrical current going out, but it's being matched with reflective energy going back so that the power supply amp meter zeroes out. Uh, we will shoot another video with a battery and a hall sensor to verify that the same thing is going on, that the hall sensor does not sense any magnetic field in the circuit. And so somehow we're able to reflect the energy back to the system. The problem we have up to this point is that uh, the experimentation that I've done in running batteries off of it. Here we go, just a minute. Let me retune this thing. As it climbs, I've got to tick it up so that, all right, let me bring it on up a little bit more. Now I'm going to start bringing it down. This is highly sensitive too. Right now I'm tuning at one one thousandth of a hertz. You know you're close whenever it drops down very slowly. If it rises and falls too quickly, you're, you're not close to the matching frequency of the output and the reflective energy going back. We're maintaining it at 7.1 volts, which means that if we were directly connected to power supply to the tank, you see that you see the smoke now. About Twelve like, amps right off of the power supply. It's still running. You can see the gas is coming off the top there, on the right. You'll the also right notice is. that yep. that orange crud that you see at the top of the water is actually the There's minerals of the water. There's bubbles for you. Oh it's wow! Down the water. The what he's doing being released. It, it's okay, so the, those are uh, not those bubbles, the big bubbles, are the ones that I was getting, and they were a lot bigger when I was pulling on it. The fog that's in there, it's, I don't know why, but it seems like it, it has to happen before those big bubbles actually occur. I mean, it's almost like Wait, what did, water. What did you do? Dunk your coil into a, a vat of water and see if it No, would, I built a, a special coil out of stainless steel. And oh, okay. So you. Hmm, oh, so you specifically built an electrolysis idea, chamber. Yeah, yeah, and it was round, and the amount of hydrogen it put out was scary. <laughs> you know why Most I think he's using low frequency here? Sorry, you know, I want uh, to explain why I think he's using low frequency here to get the reflection. Okay. To, uh, here, to let, let me let me uh, put you on screen, and you can have the floor for that for a second. So, uh, oh, wrong person. <laughs> How do I do this? So I think he's using oh, the low. Yeah. It's just brief, you know. I think he's okay. using the low frequency because that those cells are are that's the tuning for those cells. They they take a long time to bounce from one cell to the next to the last cell and then back the other way to the first cell, and that mm -hmm. probably is a low frequency. So <laughs> if he can time his pulse to go in, I mean, let me rephrase that. If he can time his second pulse to go in at the timing and to be in phase with the return of his first pulse. Now you understand what I'm getting at. Okay. You could take me right. off screen now. Oh, it's okay. Um, yeah, no. So that's interesting. It's again, it, it all goes back to timing, you know? Right. And I'm saying those cells are low frequency in, you know, a low frequency resonating cells. So in other words, they, there's so many cells. So uh, a signal has to, jump from one cell to the next one to the next one to the last one in the line 
and then come back to the first one in the line. And that takes a long time. That makes it a low frequency. So if you're able to time your 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 second pulse to 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 go in the the input when your first pulse is coming back to the input, you're essentially sending your first pulse the your your back the other way instead of wasting it. Right, you're utilizing the extra. You're making your first pulse hit a wall so it has no exit. It has to go back into the system. You're mm -hmm. you're creating a wall for your first pulse by timing it because your your first pulse does not come back for one thousandth of a hertz, which gives you mm -hmm. time, plenty of time, to to sync up with the return of your first pulse with by pulsing your first pulse, its return with your second pulse. And making them in phase by waiting for the delay that it's like the the delay that's happening inside the cells the cells is delaying your signal the signal you hit the first pulse signal you hit you give the cell it got it got like, it takes time to go through the cell and come back to the beginning again and that's slow apparently it's slow ulf so he was mm. able to tune into that fuel cell at an ultra low frequency like that and and time his pulses at, at that low frequency so that the second pulse he creates is actually smacking right into his first pulse that's coming on the way back. I, I think that sunk in somewhere. <laughs> yeah, no, it's 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 definitely processing in my brain. Uh, like I said, I, I take a few minutes to process some complex ideas. So, but uh, you definitely given me a lot to think about the reflection electrolysis and the process that he's doing right here. And and yeah, the reflection. You, you, it's like you're you're creating a when you have a, a he, resonance. He's referring it to the flyback as reflection. You have all that. Yeah, you have all that reverberation or or, or counter. Um, uh, the waveform is bouncing everywhere or whatever. So it's like you get. It's like you're hitting the first plate of the fuel cell with a with a stick or a steel bar to make it ring, and that ring mm -hmm. has to transmute through all the other cells and come back the other way again to the first cell to complete its uh, vibrational wave or whatever. Hmm. Oh, transmute, that's a good word, because that...